All right, so let me try to summarize this. I've got, I've got f of x. I've got the original function. If, uh, if f of x is greater than 0, then I know that it's above the x-axis somewhere. If f of x is less than 0, then I know that on the graph it's going to be below the x-axis somewhere. If f of x equals 0, then I have an x-intercept. Right? So there's your, you know, the stuff from algebra. We've taken it kind of a step further now. And we're saying, okay, well, if f prime of x is greater than 0, that means that f of x is increasing. If f of x is less than 0, or prime of x is less than 0, that means that our function is decreasing. And if f prime of x equals 0, that means we have a critical number. So there's where f prime is equal to 0. There's where f prime is equal to 0. It gives us a relative maximum or relative minimum of the function. Then we went one step further. If f double prime of x is greater than 0, then our graph is concave upward. If uh, f double prime of x is less than 0, that tells us that our graph is concave downward. And then the last piece of the puzzle is what if f double prime of x is equal to 0? First, what do we call it? Well, we call this an inflection point. And that's a point where the graph switches from concave up to concave down. What does it look like on a graph? It's not necessarily that easy to, uh, to recognize, but luckily we can, uh, we can smart board it. I'll give you all different kinds of uh, concave up and concave down sections. Well, if I put these together, this point where they meet right here, this is an inflection point. It switches from concave up to concave down. Then I can take this one and put it on top. Oh, I got some of these together. Another inflection point. Let me break these up. Grouping, ungrouped. Um, this one I got a little sloppy with. Let's rotate it in a little bit. Uh, so if I stick this one in here, there's another inflection point right there where they come together. And if I take this one in here, there's another inflection point. So if I actually drew the graph, this is how the inflection points would look. They're not so easy to spot, actually, as maximums and minimums or x-intercepts. But you, you can kind of get the idea. And I'll even separate these a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about, that we're looking at. We're looking at places where this concavity is switching. So that, that, those are where the inflection points are. Concave down, switch to concave up. Switch to concave down, switch to concave up, switch to concave down. So physically, that's what you're looking for. The way that you find those points, if I had this on, uh, on an axis, if you're trying to find these, we'll call this x1, x2, x3, x4, and you're trying to determine what those values are, those are all the places where the second derivative is equal to zero. So x1, x2, x3, and x4, they would satisfy this function if you just set it equal to zero um, and solved. Th these are the answers you would get. So we'll play with that more in some examples in another video.